Hey guys, happy Thursday. It's math time again. Um, what I wanted to do today was I wanted to go over um, the eight questions on the enrichment packet that you guys got. I know it kind of stumped some people, but again, don't get to the point of where you're really that worried about it. If you haven't turned it in, it's still not a problem. You can follow along with me and we can kind of see what the... Uh, See what the answers are. That's the best thing to do is like, see what the answers are. Um, let's actually start off with number one. Oh, and by the way, thanks for the people, uh, to the people that sent out the message about what a ball times a ball times a ball times a ball was. Um, I'll give you guys those answers in a little bit. And also with a straw, I think we had a straw times a straw times a straw. Then we also had four balls times a straw. And again, those of you guys that sent out those answers, Thanks for those answers. Um, I, I'll, I'll let you guys know what those answers were at the end of this. But let's get to number one. Number one, um, we had a problem where we had the crossword puzzle. And I'm just going to go through this because it was a pretty much simple uh, division. But on the crossword puzzle, we had one across. One across was 48. Um, I, that was A across. That's 48. Um, then we had C was 20 and D was 400. And then on the down, we had uh, A was 410, B was 200, or excuse me, 2,400, and C was 20. So, just real quick again, across A, 48, C, 20, D, 400. Um, going down, A was 410. B was uh, 2,400 and C was 20. So if you didn't have that right, then you know, um, shoot me a message on Google Classroom if um, that stumped you. And maybe it was just the fact of understanding across, down, and everything else. But hopefully everybody didn't have any issues with that one. But let's go on to number two. Number two, and I'm gonna read off the paper here. If you guys see me looking off to the side here, I'm gonna adjust, adjust my paper. The product of two whole numbers is 95. One of the numbers is between 2 and 7. Find the two numbers. The product of two whole numbers is 95. Um, one of the two numbers is between 2 and 7. So, if you look back here on the board here, I've got 95, we've got two whole numbers, and we've got 2 and 7. So, the big thing that you want to look at right now is you want to kind of draw out something here saying that if we have it's, it's between two and seven that means that we can have the number of three four five or six we have three four five or six now if they said that the product between h2 um let me read it for sure the product of two whole numbers is 95 one of the numbers is between two and seven find the two whole numbers well if we take those and we started dividing 95 by those numbers, we divided 95 by those numbers, you insert a three. Can 95 be divided evenly by three? And that's the whole thing. The product, you know, if we multiply the two, it's gonna give you 95. So could that be um, divided in without a remainder? Now, of course, we can look at this and we can say that the three goes into the nine, sure, but then again, right away, you're gonna see you're gonna have a remainder because the three is not gonna go into the five. So three wouldn't work, so we can just kind of cross that three out there, and let's try four. Does four go into 95 evenly without a remainder? So just, I mean, and not even going through um, our full long division, we can just take a look at this and see that Four goes into nine, yeah, it goes in two times. That leaves us with a one, and that means that it's 15. Four is not gonna go into 15. This is the way that you can mentally do this without having to go through and do the whole thing. So we know that that four is not gonna work there. So next we step over to, and we can just do this. We know the four is not gonna work, we know the three is not gonna work. So now we can go to the five. So we look and we say, does five, or can five go into nine? Yeah, five can go into nine. And we might be on to something here because five can go into nine. So let's go ahead and kind of go through this. Five goes into nine, how many times? Five goes into nine. I think I heard that from someplace over there. Emily, is that Emily? No, Victoria, thank you. Five goes into nine one time. And if we multiply, kind of slide out of your way just a little bit, make sure that you guys can see this. Five goes in, and if we've got one times five, that's gonna give us five. 
zero. It's going to give us five. Do the subtraction. Nine minus five is going to be four. Bring that five down. Does five go into 45? Does five go into 45? Yes, Levi, it does. Thank you for that answer on there. How many times does it go into 45? It goes in 19 times, or nine times, I should say. 19 is the answer on that. So, nine times five is going to give you 45. You're going to wind up with zero. They say the product of the two numbers is 95. Very promising. But let's make sure that, uh, yeah, we'll just kind of put a circle around that one, thinking that that's probably the answer there. But if we took 6 and we did 6 into 95, yes, 6 and 9 is going to be 3. That 3 and 5 is going to give you 35, so that's not going to go in evenly. So our answer is what? 5 and 19. 5 times, got an earthquake going on here with the board. 5 times 19 is going to give you 95. Thumbs up, sideways, down, don't quite understand that. It's just one of those bills where you guys gotta kind of think about what did it give you? It said it's in between two and seven, that means it's three, four, five, or six. Three, four, five, or six, and it's gotta be even, so that's the only number right there. Five is the only number that can be even, evenly distributed into 95. So, that is number two, so hopefully uh, that didn't stump everybody too much. Number three. Number three, let me scroll down here on my computer. Doing everything virtually here. Number three, for every five dollars Sally saves, her mother gives her one dollar. Sally's father gives her two dollars for every eight dollars that she saves. How much will Sally have after all, or in all, after she saves eighty dollars? So here's the key. She's saving $80. You see what I'm saying? It's like she's saving $80 and her mother says, mother's being generous and saying, well, for every $5 that you save, for every $5 that you save, I'm going to give you $1. Dad says, I'm going to up that and says, for every $8 that you save, I'm going to give you $2. Now, if you save, and they said Sally saves $80. If you look at the question, it says, uh, how much will Sally have after she saves $80? So if we look up at the board, $80 is the key there. How much is she going to save? She's going to save $80. Now, obviously, she's going to have more than that after she finishes, but she's going to save $80. So if we take the 80 divided by 5, why are we dividing it by 5? Yes, Olivia, go ahead. We're dividing it by 5 because 5 is the amount of um, money that she's saving at a time. That's the amount of money she's saving at a time for her mother. So that's the whole thing about it. It's like for her mother, she's saving $5. So 80 divided by five. What is 80 divided by five? Anybody? Yes, go ahead, Liam. 80 divided by five, that is gonna be 16. Because five goes into 40, how many times? Five goes into 40 eight times, if we break this down. Five goes into 40 eight times, and then five goes into 80 16 times. Good job of thinking mental math there. Now, if her mother's gonna give her, um, if she saves $16, her mother's gonna give her $1 for every $5 that she saves, so she saves $5 16 times, so that's gonna be one times what? 16, which is going to give her what? $16. That's what her mother's going to give her. Mother's going to give her $16. So dad says for every $8 that you save, yeah, I'm going to give you $2. And she saved $80. So it's the same thing here. We're kind of repeating. So this should be the obvious one. Felicity, what is that? 10, exactly. 10. So she's got $80 at $8 a pop. Then she's going to have $10. So her dad's going to have to pay out $2 on $10. She has to pay out $2 on $10. So that's the reason why we have this here. So that's dad's money that uh, we should say mom, dad. You guys can list it like that just so you don't get confused. So you got mom and dad. 
Then we got two times what? Two times 10. Two times 10 is gonna give us what? That will give us 20. Two times 10 will give us 20. So it's just a point of where if she saves $80, remember this, because we come down to the end there. The question is, how much will she have? How much will she make if she saved $80 and her mom's giving her uh, $1, dad's giving her $2. $2 on every $8, $1 on every $5. So we know how much she's going to get from mom. We know how much she's going to get from dad. We should put that little dollar sign there. So bottom line is she saved $80, right? So we're going to do what? Add. Very good. We're going to add 80 plus, let's say 16 plus 20 is going to equal what? And we go 8 and a 2, that's 100. It's actually going to come out to $116. $116 is what she's going to earn total if she does, or if her mom and dad pay out. Hopefully they will. I mean, that's what they told her, but she saved $80. So mom pays out a um, dollar on each. Mom pays her $16. Dad pays her $20. So Sally actually makes out pretty good just by saving. So this is real world problems. If you actually save that way, that's uh, kind of like interest. You know, mom, mom's giving her interest, dad's giving her interest. So if you're ever wondering about um, how this ties in real world wise, this is one of those things. You know, Sally actually comes out on top there. Okay, that's number three. And number four, number four, a little tricky. Got it on the sideboard here. Number four, if we look at this, think about what we've got here. We got 90, a farmer has 93 eggs. I said 93 eggs, he divides them. Kind of moving all around here. I'm trying to get that and there we go. Has 93 eggs and what the farmer does is he basically divides those eggs up into two groups. He says one of those groups has um, double the amount than the other group. One of the group has double the amount than the other group. So if I kind of explain this here, that's 93 eggs total. You divide them up into three groups. And the reason why we're dividing them up in three groups, if you think about this, one group has double the amount than the other. So if I had, let's just say three eggs, and I said I'm gonna break them up into two groups, and I'm just breaking down three eggs for a reason because it's a little simpler to uh, really get, and you'll kind of see why I did the 93 there. But if I had three eggs, and we said we're gonna divide them up into two groups. So we took, Sorry about that. We took one, one egg, put them over here. The other egg, put it over here. That means we have one egg left. So if I took that one egg and I put it in one of those groups, then that, that group, the larger group, is going to have two eggs and the smaller group is going to have one egg. So that means that we have two groups and one group has double the amount than the other group. That's what we got with the farmer here. The farmer's got 93 eggs. He's got double the amount. So if we look at this little bar graph here, the bar graph is basically broken down into three. That's 93 eggs total. I should have wrote eggs on there. That's 93 eggs total. So if we broke those down into three groups, it does break down evenly. 31 eggs per group. We got 31 eggs per group. So if you got 31 per group, then they went on to say that the farmer had, and that's where the large eggs and the, the large group, small group, large group has 62 eggs. Because that's what you really should do is just take that and say, well, that's the large group there. Large, small. So the large group has 62 eggs. Small group has 31 eggs. Is everybody with me? Large group 62, small group 31. Now we go on into the next part of the problem. He said he divides them up. He says he divides the large group up in the cartons that... Um, only have five per, five eggs per carton. Then he takes a smaller group and he divides them up where they have, um, t I think he said 10 eggs per carton, three eggs. Hang on one second. We make sure what they said the farmer has. He packs the eggs in the, in the small group into crates that have three eggs in each. So he has crates and three, three eggs uh, in each crate five eggs in each crate on the 62. So if we take 62 divided by five, that's gonna leave us with 12, remainder of two eggs. If we take the 31 divided by three, 
that's going to give us 10 crates with a remainder of one. So the overall question was, what's the total amount not packed? The total amount not packed is three. Why is that? Because we've got one egg left over there and we've got one egg left over here. So total amount is three eggs. Everybody understand that? Understand why we broke this down into three? And just like I said too, if I had the number three and I said I'm gonna break that up into two groups, then you break it up into two groups and basically you have, you have, um, especially since it was double the amount, that's what you're gonna wind up with. This is double the amount and one group has more than the other, like I said one or two or 62 and 31. So that's the first three, that was uh, question number four. So now let's get on to question number five. Okay, let's get to number six. Number six, if we really take a look at this problem here, the question is, or the way it states is, A divided by B equals eight. Kind of like those baseballs there. You know, A and B have a value. But what it's telling you, here, here we're gonna read, read this off. A divided by B equals eight. A is an even number and B is an odd number. Both numbers are less than 10. What are the two numbers? So we've got um, A is an even number, B is an odd number, it's less than 10. So eight, uh, A divided by B equals eight. So we know we gotta come up with that. So if we think about this, they're less than 10. So let's go ahead and do this. Write it out, two, four, six, eight. That's what A, A is gonna be one of these numbers here. B is gonna be either one, three, five, seven, or nine. It's gonna be one, three, five, seven, or nine. So basically what we wanna do now is if the answer is eight, then two divided by something is not gonna give us eight. So we can, we can really just look at that process of elimination and say, that's obviously not gonna work. That definitely is not gonna work. So um, four divided by something over there, even if it's four divided by one, that's not gonna work because that's not giving us eight. So remember, what's it asking for? It's asking for this to equal that side. So this has got to equal that side. So we go in and we say four divided by uh, B, something on B, not gonna work with that. So we can cross that out as well. Six, six divided by something from B. Six can be divided by one, it can be divided by three. Uh, technically it can be divided by five with a remainder of one, but that's not what we're looking for because it's got to equal both sides. So eight's looking like a winner there. So if we've got eight left over and we go over there and kind of plug it in from that side and say eight divided by something from B, start from the first one there. Eight divided by one equals what? Yes, I know, I know, calm down. Everybody's jumping up and down, hands up and down. We got, I wouldn't say we got lucky. It was one of those deals where it was the very first thing. So eight divided by one equals eight. There's really no need to go through this because eight divided by three is gonna give me two and something else. And we can just cross those off because we know those aren't gonna work. So the answer to that first one, uh, uh, A on uh, part six, or question six, part A, I should say, is eight divided by one equals eight. Eight divided by one equals eight. Now, we jump over to B on question number six, and here's what I want you guys to do. You guys are probably like, why in the world do we have this eight down here? We're still looking for Earthquake. We're still looking for there we go, adapt and overcome there. Adapt and overcome. I think it's the upstairs uh, running around and you know what happens when we're in the classroom. Got that earthquake going on there. But if we take a look here and say on part B, part B, um, A and B are even. We're still looking for eight. Remember the original question, original problem was A divided by B equals eight. So if we take a look here and say A and B, A and B, they uh, can equal, they said they're both even numbers. They're both even numbers that are less than 20. So what do we do? That two kind of got messed up there, but that's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and that's it. Those numbers have gotta be there someplace. So what do we do? 
Something divided by something is going to give us eight. Got to be even numbers. So this way, I would tell you to start off high there. Start off high and say 18 divided by, oh, let's go down into the low end there. Think about this, nine times what is 18? Nine times two is 18. So 18 divided by two, that's not gonna work. Drop down to 16. 16 divided by two. What is 16 divided by two? 16 divided by two gives you what? Gives you eight. Process of elimination there. And if we look at this, we're going through this process of elimination. Uh, took 18, 18 doesn't work because that's nine. Took 16, 16 works. If we actually went to 14, 14 divided by two, that's seven. I mean, we weren't gonna go 18 divided by four or 18 divided by five or anything like that. So again, this is what it was asking for us originally. If we look back up there, that's what it was asking us. So it's the point of where 16 divided by two. 16 divided by two. So A is 16, B is two. Everybody understand that? Hopefully it's not too confusing on that one. But again, this is how we um, actually go through this. That's uh, B, uh, part B of uh, question number six and part A of question number six. It was eight and one. So now we're gonna go to, we're gonna take this down. We'll get that fixed a little bit later on. But now we're gonna go to the next question. This was question seven. Question seven, if you look at question seven, it was basically a division problem, but there's a whole lot of, and again, I always seem to have problems on how I'm standing there. There we go. Question seven, we have E, F, G, and H. E, F, G, and H. E, F, G, and H, and our original problem was over here. We had three divided into E3, whatever that is, and um, that gave us, you know, the six down below, the G3, one, H, and one, two, and F. That's what the original problem was. So I just kind of took those and put little squares there, so you guys kind of know what that is. That's obviously F up there, E right there, G and H. So if we really look at this problem and we say three divided into what, or what divided by three? What divided by three? Oh, E is greater than five. E is greater than five. So to start with six, take a six first. And if we put a six in there and we said six is right here, six divided by three, oh yeah, that's two. And that would be six, but there's a problem here because there's a remainder someplace. Six minus six, remember sister subtracts, six minus six wouldn't work because we have to have some type of remainder there. So that six doesn't work there. So walk up the ladder. What would be the next one? Next one, Abby, seven. Let's try seven. And we go seven. Can three go into seven? Yes, three goes in seven. Three goes in seven how many times? It goes in two times. So if we went in and said two times three equals six, seven minus six equals one. Okay, we're looking pretty good there because now as we look at this whole problem here, this actually should be, I'm gonna put that little dotted line. I know that wasn't the original, but I've been telling you guys about putting that zero there. But we just walked up the ladder with the seven, as Abby told us, we got seven. So two times three, six, gives us that one left over. I is this correct? We don't know yet. I'm kind of banking that it might be because we got a one right there and that one minus one is going to give us zero. We're looking through the whole problem right now. The one minus one is going to give us zero. So that seven might just work right now. The seven might just work. So let's go ahead and continue on with this. So if we went in and we said that um, that was a seven in there, we went, uh, how many times does three go into seven? Two times, go all the way through our problem, bring that three down, bring the three down. So now how many times does three go into 13? 13 divided by three is what? Oh, I'll just wait one second. Sean looks like he wants to answer. Uh, Sean? Yes, exactly. Three goes into 13 six times. Three goes in 13 six times. Six times three. Actually, I'm wrong there. I'm wrong. I'm, I don't even know why I put that up there. Three does not go in there six times. 
not saying you were wrong, Sean. I just heard you wrong. Three times four. Three times four is going to give me 12. And again, I'm thinking six. Got all these sixes flying all over the place here. But three times four is going to give me 12. So four times three, 12. Put the two there. What do we have? If we had to put the six there, it obviously would have been wrong. But four, four times three, 12. That's how we kind of solve this. So looking back on this, F equals what? F equals four. E equals seven. And E equals seven. G equals one. H equals two. That's problem number seven for you. So those are things that, uh, you know, again, a little bit of thinking there. Not as difficult as me trying to straighten this out there. There we go. All right. Kind of tough when you're looking at the camera and the, the film and everything too. But hopefully that kind of explains everything. And, you know, again, it's just a process of elimination. Now on to the next ones. Okay, we're going to backtrack because I actually forgot one problem there. And that was problem number five. Problem number five deals with my favorite person, John. And those of you guys, um, when we asked about uh, JP and Freddie, I never got a response of what JP stood for. So I'm going to tell you now, John Penguin. John Penguin, that's where JP comes from. So we got JP and Freddie, just in case you guys were wondering. Um, you might have known that too. And I know people are going, oh, I should have answered that one. Yes, should have answered that. Very simple. John Penguin. John Penguin, um, his age, JP, we should substitute JP. JP's age is divisible by two. His age is divisible by two, and when you do that, it comes out evenly. So something that's divided by two, like 20, 20 divided by two, that's an even number, you know, um, or even 18, whatever it is, it's, you know, his age is an even number. So last year, last year, JP's age could be um, divided by three. Last year, his age could be divided by three. So with that being said, if we know that his age at present time is divisible by two, last year is divisible by three. But here's the kicker. What is it telling us right there? He's less than 10 years old. He's less than 10 years old. So stop and think. What's it asking? They're saying uh, last year is divi uh, divisible by three. This year um, it's divisible by two. But he's less than 10 years old. So write this out. If you write it out, you say, well, now JP could be two years old, four years old, six years old, or eight years old, because those are the even numbers between one and 10. And then last year, if we look at it, he could be one, one years old, three years old, five or seven. Now, if we're saying that last year, his age was divisible by three, is one divisible by three? Of course not. Five divisible by three? Yeah, five divisible by three. But then again, that's going to give us a remainder and everything, except for you who um, have those. Well, I'm one and a half. So if you guys are throwing that half in there, that's where that would come in. But we're not even going to go with that. Obviously, I'm skipping the three because we know that that's probably what that is. Because seven, yeah, it's not seven. It's one of those where something that's divisible by three. Three divided by three. equals one. So is that divisible by three? Yes, it's divisible by three. So now, if we got three as his age last year, how old is he now? One year, you know, three plus one, one year, that's going to mean that he is four years old. He's four years old at present time. So JP's four years old. But what did the question ask us? How old is he going to be in three years from now? I think that's what it said. How old will he be three years from now? So if we look at this and we say four years old, add three years to it. JP is going to be seven years old. Everybody get that. Don't want to be too confusing on that, but JP, John Penguin, is actually four years old right now. And three years from now, he's going to be seven years old. But what we did was like last year, 
you can divide his age by three. This year, you can divide his age by two evenly. And then also, too, it said that he's under 10 years old. So we go through that. Two, four, six, eight is what he could be this year. One, three, five, or seven is what he could have been last year. So what's divisible by three from last year? That three right there. So that's kind of showing you the three can be divisible by three. And JP's age is four years old presently. But the overall question was, how old is he going to be 10 years from now? If you ever saw this on a test and you just, you did this, you'd probably get half credit. Got to make sure that you tell us exactly how old he's going to be in three years from now. Okay. Last one and final one on this uh, series here, on this uh, enrichment. Hope everybody found this enrichment, enriching drum row or rim shot, I guess I should say. Rim shot on that. Thank you, Hina, for laughing. I think that you got that one. Okay, last one is, we look at this and we say number eight. We've got a number that is divided by three, number that's divided by three, and the remainder is one. When that same number is divided by four, the remainder is three. So there's a couple of different ways to do this, but there's also, if you think about this too, um, there's, there's a bunch of different answers, but we're just going to go through and show you one of the answers on this and how you go about getting that answer. So we say a number is divided by three, the remainder is one. So should we really go with one, two, or three? No, no, we shouldn't go through one, one, through, one two, or three because one, two, and three, one, two, or three, if we divide that by three, first of all, we can't divide one and two by three. But if we divide three by three, that's not going to give us a remainder of one. So let's jump up the ladder. Let's walk up that ladder there. Let's go four. If we divide it four by three, do we have a remainder of one? Yeah, we do. So four might be, might be a winner there. Four might be a winner. Okay. Then he said when that same number is divided by four, then make sure the earthquake doesn't strike again. If that same number is divided by four, we have a remainder of three. So can four be divided by four? Yes, it can. But if four is divided by four, we have a remainder of zero. So four is out of the question. Went to the second part there, kind of ruined what we thought was going on in the first part. So let's go to five. If we go five, Five divided by three. Five divided by three. Divided by three, that's going to give us one with a remainder of two. So, no, that doesn't work. That definitely doesn't work. So, five's out of the question there. Let's go six. Six divided by three, there's no remainder. So, six is out of the question. Let's go seven. Seven divided by three. We can get rid of that because we don't need it. Seven divided by three. 7 divided by 3, that is going to do what? That's going to give us 2 with a remainder 1. 2 with a remainder 1. Hmm. 7 looks promising right now. Lucky 7s. So, we got 2 with a remainder 1. Remainder 1 is the main thing we're just looking for. Don't worry about the 2 there, but it's just a point where we're looking for that remainder 1. So, now let's jump to that other part of the question that says, when that same number is divided by 4. We get a remainder of three. So if we pick seven and we said seven divided by four, I always have a problem with making that too long there. Seven divided by four, four goes into seven. How many times? Yes, you're right. That's one time. That's going to be four. Mother, father, sister, brother, rover. And bring it down. We got a remainder of three. Does that look like that'll work? So, right now we're looking at lucky number seven. Seven is the number that we're looking at. Everybody get that? We've got, we've got seven, and like I said, when a number is divided by three, the remainder is one. Um, seven divided by three is going to give us a remainder one. Then when it's divided by four, we're going to have a remainder of three. So. 4 divided by, or 7 divided by 4 gives us a remainder 3. Now we can keep walking up the ladder and find out exactly what else works as well. Because, you know, if you went 8 
you know, eight divided by three, no, you're going to get a remainder two. Nine divided by three is going to be even. Ten divided by three, ten divided by three would definitely work because we're going to have a remainder of one. But then again, if we had ten divided by four, you got a remainder two, so that doesn't work. And then you just keep walking up the ladder and seeing exactly how that works out. So um, with this, if we think about it, um, I'm just going to throw this out there and say 19. Because 19 divided by uh, 19 divided by 3 is going to be 3 with a remainder 1. So 19 is one of them. And you guys could do this on your own. But that's just, you know, 19, 19 is one of the ones I'm looking at. Then 19 divided by 4. 19 divided by 4. Let's just do this over here. 19 divided by 4. And 4 goes into 19 how many times? Goes into 19, Brayden. Ah, four. Four times. Couldn't hear you back there. Four times four, gonna give us 16. Subtract, gonna give us a remainder three. So, we've got 19, we've got seven. You see how this works? It's like either, you know, you guys can just walk up the ladder and there's all kinds of numbers that could plug in with that. So it's just a process of elimination. Okay, that's the enrichment portion of math. Hopefully everybody um, got that down. And like I told you before, that's uh, JP Penguin there. Making his uh, second appearance. And Freddy the Frog. So JP and Freddy are gonna definitely be with us until the end of the school year. And Freddy and JP, hope that you guys are being safe. Yeah, JP. But... Okay, there we go. JP is definitely going to be with us till the end of the school year as well. Um, we've got some more stuff um, for you guys. Once you get back from break, um, please try to be safe. I know that um, it's kind of hard to go anyplace during the break, but um, watch for or actually look for some information being put out on Google Classroom. Um, there's some stuff that um, I'm going to try and do, um, some fun stuff. I'll explain it on Google Classroom. So. Um, look for that and also too I'm going to be sending out a video for you guys that's going to help you with uh, the assignments that we're putting on Google Classroom when you put it down and I know that you're trying to open it up that's my fault for not necessarily uh, knowing that um, still kind of new to Google Classroom and Cami when you open up a project or an assignment um, you'll notice that it probably says uh, Cami assignment so if it's a Cami assignment it says open with that's what you should do I don't know if everybody really got that, but open with Cami. And if you open with Cami, then you're able to write on it. But I'm gonna send you a video, and this video will definitely help you understand that. So once we get back from break, you guys will really understand exactly how it is that um, you can write on a um, write on the document, and then once you turn it in, I see exactly how you guys wrote on that and everything else. So that's definitely a plus right there. And what I also, want to do as well as I mentioned I'm going to tell you what the answers were a stick times a stick times a stick comes out to 512 512 excellent job on the people that figure that out and then a ball times a ball times a ball times a ball does not come out to 20 there's a couple of people that were adding there but doesn't come out to 20 Ball times a ball times a ball times a ball comes out to 625. Then we threw in the ball times a ball times a ball times a ball. Make sure that's four balls there. Times the stick. Times the stick. That's an eight. That came out to 5,000. That came out to 5,000. Um, so anytime I do stuff like that, just shoot me a message or a comment. And that way you guys can answer. I'm trying to get back to you guys as soon as I can possibly get back to you. Uh, again, my email pings, and then we kind of go from there. When we get back from the break, uh, I'm going to try and do some, some uh, video conferencing with you guys. So look forward to that. But until then, look out on your Google Classroom. And I'll put it up probably a little bit later on. There's some stuff. There's uh, some things I'm going to try to do. But um, just kind of follow it and go with it and send that stuff back to me. Hopefully you guys had a great week. And again, I commend you for just doing an excellent job of adjusting to Google Classroom. Um, get your work in whenever you can get it done. Uh, the math test, 
send it back. The work that I had you guys do with the Midwest project, or not project, but the Midwest states, just get that back in whenever you can get a chance to get that back in. We'll see you guys next time.